Yo, what's up? My name is Petrowski, and welcome back to episode 22 in season 2 of Road to Pokemon Mo. Now, we're currently in the Unova season with the side goal of building a fully competitive team from scratch in Pokemon Mo. This is sort of a series where we play through an account uh, as a main account would in the year 2022. Play through each region. We've done Kanto with the side goal of making 1 million Pokemon, and now we're in Unova, which we just completed the Elite Four for, as well as we're almost done our competitive 2. So, season 2 is truly coming close to a close uh this episode will be full of a lot of ev training xp training maybe some money making and move setting because really yeah really the main couple things we have left to do are to ev train these you know three pokemon uh level these three pokemon and then move set these three pokemon so really only three things left we just need to finish these three pokemon as our last three things to do which is really exciting it's been a true grind it's been a long journey another season of road to pokemon has is soon to be in the books and it's been an exciting one and I, i'm so happy to be here with you guys if you guys have liked this series or liked my videos please make sure to hit the like button it does help me out a lot if you're new to the channel go ahead and consider subscribing for future pokemon content if you don't want to you know what feel free not to but you know what today we're going to be focusing on ev training so we have a larvesta which is obviously going to be turning into a volcarona to ev train and it's going to be important to figure out how many speed evs i need to put in this thing if i need to go ahead and just do 30 uh 252 speed evs with the uh timid and 28 speed now 28 speed iv is an interesting one i'm gonna, gonna run some calts and i'll figure out how many evs i need to put in that but we do need to uh train this magneton slash magnezone into i believe this does need 252 special attack 252 speed to be able to outspeed everything possible will be really really important uh so yeah that'll be relevant and then this contolder all of these are gonna have really interesting evs because they're actually like pretty specific uh, the Contolder, for example, I believe goes 252 attack, um, and then almost 252 HP, but I think you sacrifice some of the HP or attack EVs. I think probably HP. I'm probably going to sacrifice some of the attack, uh, HP EVs for a little bit more speed because, uh, having him be faster than other Conks, but actually, no, actually, I remember this. So I remember I'm actually not going to go for any speed EVs. The reason being is that I actually have 11 speed IV on this timber slash concorder, which is whatever, but it's, it came out sassy nature, which is super usable and super good, especially since we have the mock punch, you know, bred onto this thing. But because I'm sassy nature and because I'm low IV speed, there is no use to go ahead and even try to put speed EVs into this thing to try to outspeed other concorders. It's just never going to happen. I might as well just go for that extra ball. So yeah, this thing will be 252 attack, 250 HP, maybe some special defense EVs. I need to calc if I can like survive a psychic from certain uh non-stab, like maybe you know, targets or whatever. We'll see. Um, but yeah, 250 probably 252 HP, 252 attack on the Conqueror. Um, these this Magnemite will definitely be 252 spe special attack, 252 speed, and then this will be uh 252 special attack, and then most most speed, it might be 252 speed. Um, but I might go some HP EVs or something of the sort. Uh, we shall see. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and start, I believe, with the Magnemite and Velar Vesta since they both need special attack. That's the easiest one. Both of these Pokemon need 252 special attack EVs. It's really easy to just, you know, do them both at the same time, go to the spot. And so we're going to go ahead and equip my inventory and get my Pokemon party ready for that adventure. Okay, now here I am actually back over in the Unova region. I'm going to be training at one of my favorite EV training spots in the game because the shiny chance for the Pokemon is very cool. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in here to get the uh, the teleport back. So whenever I click the four hotkey, uh, I'll be able to teleport. Actually, I don't have a teleport Pokemon on me. So let me go ahead and get rid of my Murkrow and pick up the teleport mon. That'll actually be more important than this. Teleport does save a relevant amount of time when EV training or shiny hunting. I always recommend to use a teleport Pokemon over a fly Pokemon when you're doing some sort of grinding like this. So we're gonna be starting here at the Pokemon League. We have our AoE attacking Pokemon with our Surf Dragonite, and then we have our XP share on our Magnemite and our Larvesta. So we're gonna go ahead and run down here. We have, we have our, our catching Burlum just in case we get a shiny, but it's pretty unlikely. Now, I love this spot. You just basically run down south, down this whole mountain. Uh, you come over to this Crackled Land. Let's pick up this Pokeball while we're here. Why not? A free Great Ball. We're gonna come over here. We do have our Sweet Scent user on us. It's also very important. Um, to this like Crackled Dry Dirt. And we're going to sweets in here, and we're going to counter Heat More. Now, Heat More is going to give you 10 special, 10, 10 special attack EVs per horde, so it's obviously two per Pokemon. Fantastic EV trading spot, but Heat More is also just a wildly cool shiny, in my opinion. Uh, it's a little annoying because he will snatch 
and like it will take a little bit longer sometimes because sometimes they'll you know use a little more or they'll, they'll have to wait for their turn but man in my opinion is it really worth it i love heat more it's a really cool pokemon and an even cooler shiny pretty weak pokemon in competitive play but i would love to see it get some more get some more love get some more chances uh, get some more experimentation it's just a beaut look at this shiny dude un un stunning in my opinion so i'm gonna go ahead do fit 252 special attack ev training here uh and i'll see you guys with any sort of important information maybe some some moves we have to learn that are super relevant uh, move setting might be the most difficult part of this video but basically i'll see you guys if anything interesting happens or at 252 special attack evs all right here we go magnemite evolving into magneton not a super useful you know not a crazy crazy scene but you know what still a sign of progress still a cool thing to see and we're also one horde away from getting that 252 special attack which is pretty nice uh once learn try attack so i don't think i'm gonna worry about that i think the move set is gonna end up being thunderbolt vault switch flash cannon and then hp fire so not gonna need the try attack it is really nice in my opinion to have access have that vault switch plus the the t-bolt um is really really nice in my opinion uh, and it beats out having that, like, there's, like, having Tri-Attack is really cool for the status condition, but you're not really adding any coverage besides maybe being able to hit certain things for neutral. But the things you're going to be hitting for neutral is Tri-Attack. You probably shouldn't be fighting with Magnezone anyway. So, yeah, I, I, I love the moveset of T-Bolt, Volt Switch, Flash Cannon, Hidden Power Fire. I think that's going to be the way, the way that I go with it, the way that I roll with my Magnezone. Pretty happy with that and there we go that should put me at 252 special attack evs on the magneton and the larvesta now i'm currently calculating some speed stats for the larvesta slash volcarona because i do want to know you know what speed tiers are super important um something that is really really important slash really good to at least know uh my speed iv isn't going to affect this at all but at plus one quiver dance volcarona is never going to outspeed jolly choice scarf garchomp which is really really important because jolly choice scarf garchomp is one of the most important pokemon in the meta so that sucks uh for a huge like even if i was 31 speed even if i was 31 speed uh timid 252 speed evs this i would still never do it right it would still never be able to outspeed so it's nothing of like my fault on the ivs although obviously it would be nice to have 31 speed iv but you know what what could you do here uh garchomp is so that's like a, that's a huge thing right my, my point is that garchomp is always going to be able to come in against volcarona after one quiver dance so what, what's going to happen is if you bring in your Volcarona in a good position and your opponent has Garchomp, even if you go for that Quiver Dance, they can just bring in Garchomp and go for the Stone Edge and they'll always outspeed and absolutely obliterate you. So Garchomp is a pretty huge counter to Volcarona, which sucks. Um, but if if I'm able to um, get two Quiver Dances up, I could either get two Quiver Dances up, or if I know that and expect the Garchomp switch, my best bet is probably going to go ahead and just throw off a Bug Buzz uh, to get some chip. Or Giga Drain. I feel like Giga Drain would... Uh, actually, no, Bug Buzz probably, right? Yeah, probably Bug Buzz. I think Bug Buzz is going to do the most damage here. Stab, Bug Buzz, yeah. So, uh, if I expect the Garchomp switch, if they expect me to go for a Quiver Dance, I will need to be aware of that during play and during, you know, the PvP competitive queuing. Um, if my opponent has Garchomp and I have Volcarona, if, they're Scarf, if I expect them to be Scarf Garchomp, which... A decent amount of Garchomps are 20%. That is another huge thing is like Garchomps do so many things so well. So if I see my opponent has a Garchomp, I don't immediately just assume it's Scarf. So I don't immediately just go for Bug Buzz over Quiver Dance. Um, but it'll be it'll be an interesting play. There's a lot of skill around uh, playing around Garchomp and understanding what set he is. It's going to be really, really tough and really difficult. So I'm going to try my best at that. As a non-OU player getting the information and figuring out what type of garchomp my opponent is is going to be so huge all right so after running multiple multiple speed calcs i ran like rotom wash and like mian shao and stuff like that and a lot of pretty useless speed calcs uh rotom wash i'll always outspeed it shouldn't be a big deal even with like scarf and everything mian shao i'll never outspeed because its base stat is too faster than faster than me uh it's 105 base stat speed as opposed to volcar 100 uh obviously i'm assuming choice scarf so a lot of these a lot of these calcs um, I'm always assuming Choice Scarf, and the most important calculations to run are Volcarona at plus one speed because of Quiver Dance and versus Choice Scarfers. The most important calc, there's two calculations that end up being the most important. It is Volcarona versus Salamence and Volcarona versus Hydreigon. So Salamence is 
pretty imp important because it's also a 100 base speed Pokemon. So I'll never be able to outspeed Choice Scarf Salamence, unfortunately, with this speed IV. Um, but that's okay because I'm not super scared about Salamence. He's not a super great Pokemon right now, and I'm pretty sure most people don't run him Scarfed. Uh, but I could be wrong. Yeah, most people right now run a... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Scarf is very underused right now on Salamence, which is, which is fair. Most people actually run a bold, rocky helmet sort of, I assume, roosting Dragon Dance set, which is really interesting. So I'm going to say defensive Salamence that can also sweep, uh, which is really cool. Salamence's use has really changed over the years, which is really interesting to see. Uh, but anyways, the most important calculation for me does end up being High Dragon. So, but it's it's kind of, it's good, but it's not great for me, unfortunately. I really, really wish, I will not lie, I really, really wish I had one more speed IV. I think 20, I mean, I could, let me check the calculation really quick. Um, I think 29 would change it. Yeah, so that is really unfortunate. So, okay, with 28 speed IV, I can just show you guys the calc actually on the Pokemon Showdown uh, damage calculator really quick. Let me jump over to that. All right, so here we are. If you've never seen a screen like this, this is called the Pokemon Showdown Damage Calculator, but can also be used to calculate speed. And it's a lot of basically nerdy mumbo jumbo Pokemon stuff. The most important numbers here are gonna be this number here on the right side, and then this number here on the left side. So the left side number is Volcarona with one Quiver Dance up, Tim and Nature, 252 speed EVs at 28 speed IV. Now on the right side, you have a plus speed nature uh, high dragon, with Choice Scarf at 31 speed IV and 252 speed. So you see how they're tied. Now that is a big deal, my friends. Um, so essentially, what's gonna happen is if I ever face down a High Dragon, um, obviously I'm assuming that I'm Quiver Danced up once because people can often, will often, will sometimes bring in High Dragon as a check to that as a last resort. Um, they shouldn't bring it in, they shouldn't be bringing in Choice Scarf, High Dragon, unless they expect me to be like a bulky Volcarona set with less with you know more hp investment or like bold nature or something like that to be bulky but mine's be pretty fast um so yeah it's basically comes down to if i'm against high dragon i need to understand that i'm risking the game i'm risking it on a roll i'm risking it on a coin flip we're going to be speed tied uh so yeah my volcarona at plus one quiver dance is going to be speed tied against the choice scarf high dragon which is a pretty common situation i have to keep that in mind when playing i have to understand that sometimes it might be worth to take that 50 50 and it might be worth to risk that speed tie and that sometimes it might be worth to you know get out of there and try to save the game depending on you know what pokemon i have left what pokemon my opponent has uh how the matchups all scale out i basically have to understand that that's going to be a speed tie and i have to figure out how to play that speed tie depending on the situation depending on the game depending on the state of the game and all that stuff so pokemon's all about adjusting adjusting with information that you have and using the information that you have accordingly so i'm going to try to do that it's just basically the tldr i my volcarona is going to speed tie with choice scarf high dragon that's very very important all right now that we're done all that stupid math stuff that i hate so very much we figured out that i actually do want 252 speed evs on my volcarona to be able to speed tie the high dragon that is actually really important uh, i want that opportunity i want that chance so what that means is these last two pokemon or these two pokemon do need to both be trained in speed so i'm gonna go ahead and head over to kanto i could have actually headed through um unova a little bit and gone over to the rapidash spot but i'm not super worried about it i'm actually not a huge fan of rapidash shiny uh just just because of how common it's become it is a really cool shiny rapidash and ponyta are really cool shinies but because of their commonness how much how common they've become over the years due to that mostly to that eevee training spot uh it's kind of you know that prestige really rubs off and you kind of get you know kind of whatever on it so anyways the tldr is i'm gonna go ahead and start speed ev training here in kanto at this pidgeotto spot i believe i've already used this spot throughout this season of road to pokemon which is really cool there we go 10 speed evs so i'll go ahead and just i'll see you guys when i'm done ev training the speed or uh if something interesting happens i'll let you guys know see you guys soon Okay, I'm actually going to take a quick break right in the middle of the EV training at, you know, 120 speed EVs because there's something really important I think I should go ahead and attend to now. And it's sort of relisting and dealing with these Pokemon because I know that I'm going to need Pokeyen to move set all of these Pokemon once they're finished being EV trained. And I don't ha quite have enough yet. So I'm going to go ahead and claim these guys, but then also claim these guys and relist them. Really looking to, uh, 
to be able to sell some of these off. Hopefully, I might list them a little lower than what they're worth because I really want to be able to sell them off. I really want to get that Pokey in. Uh, I'm going to need to be able to move all these Pokemon. And if I sell all these for a little bit lower than here, I might actually like just have enough Pokey in. Uh, I might be overestimating as well. I, I might not need this much, but I'm going to go ahead and relist these guys and I'll show you guys what, the, what they look like on the GTL afterwards. All right, I went ahead and listed those Pokemon and then a couple others. I'll show you guys what it looks like on my listings on the GTL. Here we are. So I relisted this Tepid for its base price. It's changed a little bit and they kind of got bought out here and there. So it really just needed a relisting. I lowered this Tepid's cost by, by 10K. This was the uh, two times 31 one. And I think it's just a little bit of a niche buy. So maybe at 60K, someone might try to pick it up as a breeder and try to make some money on it. Uh, that might give me better chances to sell. I, I don't think I'll sell it for less than 60K though. Uh, this girder is two times 30 humanoid aid group. Good aid group, but still two times 30, not super useful. Um, some people might buy it as a cheap early breeder. Just 2K seems pretty fair for it on the GTL. Uh, 5K for a price, base price Larvesta. 3,500 for a 31 attack mineral aid group. This is things mineral and chaos. Uh, but the mineral does go for a little more. Uh, and this Rotom, I lowered, I just really vaguely lowered this thing from 150k to 120k. I'm really just trying to quick sell this Rotom because it's it's the most important, you know, chunk of Pokeyen to get. I think if I can sell that off, I should have enough to buy the TMs to move set the remaining Pokemon that I have. But uh, I'm not quite sure. We'll see. I, I haven't really, I haven't counted out yet. I haven't counted, you know, what move sets, what TMs I need, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but I know that I'll need more than 27k. One TM costs around 30k on average, so I need a little bit more Pokeyen to really finish these comps, even once they're done EV training. But anyways, after that note, now that I'm passively making some Pokey in the background, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to EV training. We're halfway done so far at 120 speed EVs. Alrighty, there we are. I believe that's 252 speed EVs on both these Pokemon. Totally finished, totally EV trained. Now they seem to be XP trained. And I believe Volcarona will take a while because yeah, it needs a little 59 to evolve, unfortunately, which will take a lot longer than the Magneton. The Magneton will need to get to level 50 and then I'll go ahead and uh, level it up near a magnetic field. And uh, I believe you can find that in Unova. I believe there's, I mean, I think you can find it actually in each region, which I didn't know about until recently-ish. Uh, there's a spot in Unova in that cave, the charged cave with Tynamo and Pharisee. I believe you can level it up near a rock uh, and go ahead and get the Evo pretty easily. I might just go do that right now if I'm already, if meet the requirements. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any reason not to. I don't know if I need to learn any moves or anything. Um, let me go ahead and check. So we're currently level 38. Uh, let me check. I don't, yeah, I don't see any moves we're going to need. I don't, I'm not going to use Discharge. Um, yeah, let me go ahead and just, you know what? Sure. Let's go ahead and go level this Magneton really quick. All right, so here we go. This is the cave I was talking about right here below Mistralton City. So I'm going to go ahead and run down here, pop into this cave. I don't know if you actually have to be like deep in the cave next to a magnetic field, next to a rock, or if you can literally just do it at the front of the cave. I think I'm just going to go ahead and try it at the front of the cave and see how it goes. I'm going to go ahead and move my Magneton up to the front of the party. Uh, actually, I guess I could just, I could just Sweet Scent. Yeah, I'm going to Sweet Scent. I'm out of Sweet Scent. So we're going to heal up really quick and head back to the cave. All right, okay, I'm healed up back in the cave. You're gonna go ahead and sweet send here. Now, I'm not sure the amount of XP I'm gonna get from this horde. I don't know if it'll be enough to level up my Magneton, which would be hilariously embarrassing for me. But let's go ahead and check. Am I gonna be embarrassed? Let me scroll all the way down. Can't even see quite yet. I need 825 XP. I really don't think it's gonna give it to me. Around 500, 600 is what I'm gonna get. There we go. I've been embarrassed. See you guys next encounter. All right, here we go, here we go. First encounter, first try. This is also gonna go ahead and get six defense EVs on our Magneton, which is gonna like even out the EVs, which is nice. Uh, only the last four EVs actually matter. The leftover two EVs don't matter. And there we go. We do actually get the evolution. We don't need to go to the specific rock inside the cave. We just have to level it inside of the cave. So that's pretty cool, pretty casual. And there we go, a beautiful Magnezone added to the team. It just needs to be leveled now. Just still need XP. Uh, which is, you know, a lot, but you know what? We'll get it done. The most expensive Pokemon to moveset on this team is going to end up actually being this Magnezone, sheerly out of the fact that it has to be learned or taught HP Fire. I'm actually going to go ahead and double check to see if, if we're lucky enough to where this thing literally knows Hidden Power Fire off the IVs, I will be absolutely blown away. It's very, very unlikely, um, but if it does, that'd be incredible. But yeah, HP Fire is even really important. Teaching something HP Fire, I believe, costs around 70 to 100k. Because you have to buy all of the Fire Gems. I believe it's 40 of them. Um, on top of the actual TM that is Hidden Power, which costs 30k on its own. So it's an expensive endeavor. 
uh, that I'm not looking forward to. It might actually be 20 of the gems nowadays. I think they might have changed it. So I'll buy 20 first and test it. But anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and check the IVs and see if this thing has hidden power. Okay, unfortunately, this thing has hidden power poison uh, with the IVs, which is unfortunate. We, can, we don't, I mean, we can double check once we teach it the move hidden power, but there are plenty of hidden power cal calcs online, you know, calculators online to help you calc those things out, which is super, super helpful. De definitely recommend using those if you're trying to get like an HP fire magnezone or a hidden power of a certain Pokemon. Thankfully, obviously, you don't need to go fuss around with all that since the gem method exists in the game and since you can manually change the hidden powers of certain Pokemon, but it's at least cool to know so you don't, you know, waste your money ahead of time. All right, now the question from this point kind of becomes, do I want to go ahead and go EV train my Timber, or do I want to go XP train my Magnezone or my Larvesta? And I think for now, I'm going to go do some XP training. It kind of breaks it up. We just did some, even though it's all kind of the same thing, all kind of hoarding, uh, you know, and just defeating the Pokemon in front of you. But I'm going to go ahead and over here. I'm going to heal up actually real quick and get my Sweet Sense. But I'm going to head back to Kanto. I really like this leveling spot in Kanto, just the Sand Slash slash Marowak spot. Really nostalgic, really chill for me. Uh, it's not, it's not a, it's not a great spot. It's not, I mean, it's, I'd say it's a great spot. I'd say it's a great spot, not the best spot, but uh, a pretty great spot and has some other, you know, advantages to it. I love the idea of a shiny sand slash slash sh shiny Marowak. That would be incredible to me. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be here surfing down these hordes with this Dragonite. Now my HM friend Dragonite should actually be reaching level a hundred today, which is also really cool. You know, I think it's just a showing of, I've used this Pokemon across two seasons. It's been really, really important. It was one of the most hype things I was super excited about for this series was, you know, building a new HM friend uh, and getting an HM friend, and we did it. And I think it's a really cool thing, and I just think it's it's such a showing and such a huge so sign on an account to have a level 100 HM friend Pokemon. I think it's just it's just always nice. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get my Magnezone up to level 50. We'll see if I get it to if I get it to level 50 first, or if I get my Dragonite to level 100 first. I'm thinking the Dragonite will, will reach level 100 first, and I hope I can catch that on camera. But we'll see. You know what? I always miss those sort of things, but hopefully I'll remember this one. Okay, hey, there it is, boys. The first shiny on the road to Pokemon account. Are you kidding me? Shiny Marowak at 6,604 encounters. I kid you not. I, I took a break, went to play some Overwatch, came back, loaded up, and immediately encountered Shiny Marowak. That is in the first horde. That's beautiful. It's crazy the amount of times you'll see that. I feel like that actually happens a lot. Like, the amount of times you'll, uh... I might fly here. I think it's actually worth it to, uh, to dodge the damage. I'm gonna go ahead and fly this top Marowak. Um, yeah, I shouldn't be too worried about anything crazy going on, but it's crazy the amount of, uh... I feel like I see that all the time. I feel like I see so many shiny hunter videos or so many things where like people just log on, do one horde, uh, and just get the shiny. And it's shocking, like, like that's so rare. Like for for you to do so many hordes and for the for the one horde to be when you log on is is really really unlikely. That's incredible. Shiny Marowak is a really cool shiny. Hoping for some decent, hoping for some decent IVs, but we'll see. Oh, Endeavor is actually really annoying. Wow. Um, I think it's going to be worth to just go ahead and strength these things down because I don't see them being like a huge threat. I'm just going to start strengthening. I don't want to waste... The fly time is just going to cost literally so much time. Yeah, I can just strength these things down. I don't I don't see myself wiping to this. Um, I have revives if I really need them. They're focus energy. I guess I can do some crazy crit stuff, but they're like ground type. They're not grind type moves. The Endeavor comes out. Yep, yeah, there we go. Uh, shouldn't be an issue, but... Really cool shiny. I definitely prefer Sand Slash personally, but this is a huge reason why we why we XP train in this spot because I love both, dude. Shiny Marowak and Shiny Sand Slash are both incredible shinies, and I'm just super honored, super hyped to get one. It's funny because part of me wanted my my goal in my next region, whether it was you know Hoenn or Sinnoh, to be to Shiny Hunt, but instead we just went ahead and got one in uh you know while XP training during the season two, and we get level 100 on the Dragonite in the same clip. That's beautiful. That's literally poetic. Um, now, I don't think this thing has any moves to hit itself. But um, do I have any, like, repeat balls? Just in case, it might be worth to go ahead and just spore it and repeat ball. But I don't know if I have any repeat balls, actually. Yeah, I don't have any repeat balls in this account. Um, if that's the case... Hmm. I don't think it has any moves to kill itself. Ball swipe, bone rush... Endeavor, Focus Energy. Did I see the shiny one use Focus Energy? Let me double check really quick. So if you ever are scared that you might kill a shiny, what I recommend doing... So the issue is going to be hard to search for it. 
like that. Okay, mirror. Okay. Um, so I'm scared of like something like Devil Edge or something killing it. But what you can do is go to the moves. He's level 45. Uh, so I see Double Edge is not until 60. That's like the main way. So he probably has False Swipe, Bone Rush, Focus Energy, Endeavor. Yep. So we basically figure that out. So it should be good to False Swipe this thing. Figure that out by checking the Pokedex, checking the movesets. He also lives at off of False Swipe, which is, which is crazy. So here, I'm actually going to go ahead and Spore him. Make sure. I just want to like, I'm just double, triple, double, tripling Giga making sure that I'm not attacking him. Uh, it, it never gets... It never gets not scary when you're trying to attack a Pokemon. I will not lie. Um, the coolest thing about this is that I'm finally I'm gonna reset my my encounter counter for the first time in this series, which, which will be kind of a, a big deal, you know, kind of surprising, right? Um, it's an interesting thing because part of me is tempted to just like have it do all of my encounters over the entire series, but I think it's cooler if I kind of uh, reset it and have it be fresh. So what I can do is i believe i can preserve the shiny marowak encounter like in the in the in the in the encounter counter but i don't know we'll see um but really incredible shiny really cool i love his his he's got a nice he's got a nice green pompous bod he's fucking he's chilling i threw a pokeball probably shouldn't have thrown a pokeball should have thrown an ultra ball but that was just instinct let's see if it catches there we go the first shiny on the road to pokemon account that's that's incredible that's actually so cool mild nature 31 attack so mild nature is not good 31 attack is pretty good and then the female is female gender is really really good on shiny you always want your, your shinies to be female so you can breed them for a lot cheaper but yeah there's not much to talk about i mean i do want to go get it and uh follow me around with me and kind of show off its sprite and do that but before that you know what i'm actually gonna go ahead and just finish uh xp training you know gotta stick to the grind all right Check him out. There he is. I think I'm going to go ahead and put my Larvesta in here for now because I just don't need it in my party. I'm not XP training it so I can move him there and uh, have the Marowak follow me around for a little. It feels cool, man. It's a beautiful sprite, dude. Uh, if, you, if you don't know, the, the particles kind of flashing around it are not in the traditional game. That is actually from a Gen 4 slash 5 uh, shiny sprites and follower sprites mod. Um, I only run two mods in Pokemon. I use the encounter counter mod and the slash plugin, and then I use the Gen 4 slash 5 follower sprites. It basically just adds Gen 4 and 5 sprites to the game. I think it's five that aren't in the game traditionally. And then uh, it adds this little extra shiny effect, which I think is really cool. It kind of, it shows off shinies that aren't easily, I'm going to walk with it, aren't easily to be seen as shiny, such as like the Whitley Tough line or like Persian or, you know, things like that. I think, it, I think it also makes shiny Garchomp like a dark black as a follower, which is really, really cool because obviously Garchomp's shiny is pretty shit unfortunately but you know what i'm gonna go ahead and do some more xp training with the marowak behind me it's really cool pretty pretty chill reaction surprisingly maybe it's just late and because it's just like i don't know it's pretty lucky like you know it's one out of thirty thousand shiny rate to get it at six thousand is is super lucky it is super super lucky uh but i'm gonna go ahead and get my magnets on to level 50 and i might call it there i'll see you guys soon Alrighty, what's up? And there we are. We just got the Magnezone to level 50. I'm gonna go ahead and teleport back to the PC. Got our shiny Marowak. We're at 60 encounters now, so slightly getting up there, but man, what a what an episode, man. I feel like it's been pretty quick. Let me go collect the Pokeon off here too. A little bit of Pokeon to pick up from the from the sales. It's been a crazy one. It's been an interesting one. I feel like it's been it's felt kind of quick, but at the same time, I've spent so much time playing and making progress, and there's been a lot of progress. Uh, I was expecting to I don't know why. I think I totally miscalculated, but I was expecting to EV train and XP train and finish all of my Pokemon this episode, but that absolutely did not happen. Uh, I did finish one other one, which is absolutely huge. So we do have the Magnezone finish, which is which is beautiful. You do love to see that. Um, I just realized I'm going to be having two Choice Scarf Pokemon on my team. That's kind of funny. Uh, that'll be interesting. But we, I guess we could, we could switch it up and try to go like Choice Band Darmanitan sometimes to like fool people, but we're, we're not Jolly, so that's kind of bad. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what we do. Anyways, um, we do have one more Pokemon. So we have one Pokemon left to XP train, and we have one Pokemon left to EV train and XP train. And the, the comp team is fully done um, on top of, you know, a really cool Flex Shiny Marowak. I feel like I'm not as excited as I should be for this, but it's really cool. It's a really big deal. Uh, getting it so early, dude, is, is crazy. Getting it on your first horde on the login is crazy. Everything's crazy. It's been a crazy episode. If you have enjoyed this crazy episode, make sure to hit that like button. It helps me out a ton and shows support. It just shows me, you know, what you enjoy in my type of content. Subscribe for future Pokemon content if you aren't already. Uh, consider checking out my Discord. We have over 1,200 members in my Discord, which is actually insane. I think I have like 6,600 subs at the time of recording. And to have like 
you know, a sixth of them in my Discord, that's really good. Like, that is, that is a really, like, that's such an active community, you know? If you want to check out more Pokemon content after this video is over, I recommend checking out all the playlist links down below. There's ones for guides, casual content, PvP, money-making question marks, stuff like that, all sorts of content on the channel. And then finally, if you want to go above and beyond and give back to me, if my content has gotten you through some tough days, been a positive influence in your life, taught you some things, um, if you just enjoyed, you know, been entertained generally, I do really appreciate when people become a YouTube member to me for five bucks a month or hit up my Twitch. You can drop a Twitch Prime or a Twitch sub over on my Twitch. Uh, you can... Uh, become a patreon on my patreon or hit me up on venmo venmo is actually the best way to support me because there's no cutback on finances there and all the money you guys give comes to me um unlike other formats but anyways thank you all so much for watching hope you have a great day and i wish you guys the best of luck in your pokemon journey and on shiny hunts